I've been waiting for like a month to finally read this story and make this summary. My past two videos have been summaries on the stories Nexi and Drowning from Tales from the Pizzaplex Book 6. Nexi was good, Drowning was meh, but now it's time for the third story, The Mimic. If you haven't yet, go check out my summaries, because just because I wasn't the biggest fan of them doesn't mean that your opinion will be the same as mine. However, I'd bet that your opinions and mine will be pretty dang similar on The Mimic, because this story was one of the best to come out of the FNAF series. I will also be doing a summary on the epilogue for the book, so stay tuned for that, but now let's get started on my summary for The Mimic. The main character of The Mimic is 24-year-old Edwin Murray, the guy who was also the protagonist in The Storyteller. However, this story takes place 40 years before that story. Edwin lived in a factory with his 4-year-old son David, who had found dusty lace in the factory and was pretending to be a ghost. Edwin liked David's creativity, but he worried he would get sick from the dust on the lace. Edwin was currently working on an intricate wiring job, but had to pause due to David's distractions. Edwin had originally gotten this building to house his new business, and it has all this lace around throughout the building, but Edwin thought that it might be salvageable, so he left it where it was. Edwin's wife Fiona had died giving birth to David, and now it was all up to him to take care of him. When Edwin was in college, he'd made a robotic vacuum cleaner that was quite popular but died down over time due to the vacuum's longevity not being the best. Right now, David was worked up and wanted to have ice cream, chanted the words, chocolate chip ice cream at Edwin while holding his white tiger plushie in his hands. Edwin thought ice cream was the last thing that David needed right now. He was already worked up, so the sugar would just amplify that. David's chants were getting louder and louder, and he was spinning. Edwin yelled his name, and then he stopped spinning, propelling him into Edwin's work desk, knocking the yellow chicken head he was wiring onto the floor and shooting a spark out of its eye. David lost his balance and fell on his ass, putting his face into his tiger and starting to cry. Edwin sighed and picked David up, telling him that he should take a nap, and then they'll get ice cream after. David was really big for his age, and with Edwin's short frame, he didn't think he'd be able to carry him around for much longer. Maybe he'd need to build a robot to do the job for him. He stopped as he realized that that wasn't that bad of an idea, but then he continued on and brought David into the room of the factory he turned into a bedroom. After Fiona died, Edwin wasn't able to get a house, and since he needed the factory for his work, he just turned the factory into his and David's home. Edwin always ordered David to stay away from the robots he worked on, and he obeyed these orders. Orders, but David was apparently getting bolder in his adventures, so he worried that he might not obey him for much longer. That's why Edwin thought his idea of making a robot for him was such a smart idea. Edwin planned to read David a story before his nap, but he needed time to work and promised David he'd read him two stories before bedtime, and David was fine with that. So David fell asleep and almost instantly, and Edwin headed back to work. He had a lot to get done. The chicken animatronic was the 18th animatronic Fazbear Entertainment had asked him to create. They sent costumes of characters, and he would essentially have to turn the costumes into real animatronics. Because his company had failed, a Fazbear Entertainment executive named Grant Sterling had negotiated a buyout for Fazbear Enterprises. Edwin didn't like like this life. He wasn't able to keep his son entertained and work on the animatronics, so he pushed aside the chicken head and took out his drafting pad and pencil. Pushing him three weeks behind schedule, Edwin built David what he told him was a new toy that would keep him company while Edwin worked. Edwin forgot what it was like to pour himself into his creations because of what he'd been doing for Fazbear Entertainment. What he made was an endoskeleton with a program that made it learn to mimic what it saw. He got the idea from David's bed, which was shaped like a tiger, mimicking David's tiger plushie, creatively named Tiger. He rushed through writing the program and used a lot of shortcuts most people would have frowned upon, but he and David were both happy with the result. The program for the endoskeleton was called Mimic One, so when David asked what his name was, he said its name should be Mimic. David thought that was a bit weird of a name, but he liked it. Mimic essentially copied whatever David did, and David loved it. The next two weeks were the best Edwin had since Fiona died. David had created a sort of sign language to communicate with Mimic, and Edwin tinkered with him to ensure David didn't get bored. Edwin was productive and managed to finish the chicken animatronic moving on to a pirate fox animatronic while David and Mimic did many things together, like playing catch, drawing with crayons, and the Mimic even tried to eat food. But Edwin made sure that it didn't. It wouldn't hurt it or anything, he'd just rather not have to clean him. Since David had a tiger plush, Mimic always had his arm curved in a way that suggested he was holding one too, and David decided Mimic needed his own tiger. Since Edwin couldn't get him one because money was a bit tight, David managed to create a tiger using all the lace and string. Mimic also started responding to David rather than just mimicking everything. When David and Mimic made him the lace tiger, David asked Mimic if it was ready and he nodded. Then David pointed at him and Mimic smiled. 
holding a lace tiger. Edwin didn't know when or how Mimic started responding, but he was amazed. One day, Edwin got angry with David a few more times than he would have liked, for things like leaving clothes around, splashing water and toothpaste all over the place, and dressing up in a Fazbear Entertainment set costumes, ones he had to turn into animatronics and getting them all dirty. David dressed in a yellow dog costume and Mimic dressed in an alligator costume. Edwin yelled at him and took them out of the costumes, then sent them to go play quietly and stop distracting him. Later, David made him mess something up. The day just could have gone better. After David was asleep, Edwin decided he wanted to make Mimic more mobile. Mimic actually didn't have legs, so Edwin made his arms more agile, allowing his range of play with David to be much larger and also smoother. When he finished, he carried sleeping David up to bed, leaving Mimic in the workshop. He got about two hours of sleep before David woke him up, jumping on his stomach and telling him he wanted to play catch. Edwin told him to stop as he was barely awake and only half processed David telling him he'd go out and wait for him to come play with him. He heard David go downstairs and assumed Mimic would keep him company until then. Soon after, Edwin went down to get David for breakfast, but when he yelled his name, he got no answer. He felt warm air that he didn't usually feel in the factory, and Mimic was still by the workshop, but David was nowhere to be found. Edwin finally noticed that the double doors into the factory were open. He rushed outside to find David rushing out into the highway to retrieve his ball, completely unaware of the white van oncoming. David was hit by the van and killed. Edwin couldn't even process what was happening. He tried to convince himself it wasn't real, but it was. He lost his ability to process reality the moment he lost his son. For two weeks, the only memory Edwin had was the infinitely repeating moment of David's death. He woke one morning and found that he'd barely eaten anything in the two weeks and he hadn't taken care of himself. As he made his way to his workshop, he considered deactivating Mimic, but he didn't have the energy to do it. He apparently worked on the Blue Bunny animatronic during the two weeks, but he couldn't remember doing so. He didn't want to work on it, but he had to. He found Mimic had crawled onto the table holding his lace tiger, reminding Edwin of something that happened during the two weeks. Mimic had tried to hold David's tiger and Edwin tore it away from him, crying into the plushie. He didn't want to have the memory, so he just tried to suppress it. Mimic began using David's sign language for ice cream. Seeing this was too much for Edwin to process, and he had the sudden urge to destroy something. He picked up a metal rod and went ham on Mimic, bashing it for a long time. Eventually, he blinked his eyes clear and saw how much damage he'd done to Mimic, but he didn't care. He kept going until he ran out of rage and strength and his legs gave out under him, causing him to collapse. Mimic had fallen to the floor, the last little copy of Edwin's son completely destroyed as his anger turned into regret. Suddenly, we cut over to the perspective of a guy named Dominic, with his two friends Harry and Glenn entering the abandoned factory Edwin had lived in. It was an assignment in their job to come here. Harry was kind of a scaredy cat and didn't want to come here due to stories he'd heard, but he didn't want to share them, but he came anyway rather than quit his job to avoid it. As they entered the factory, Glenn slammed the door behind them to scare Harry. Harry didn't find it very funny, but Glenn and Dominic couldn't help but laugh. In the factory, what the three had to do was go in and clean up the mess that Edwin had left in it when he disappeared a few months ago and make repairs. The property had reverted to Fazbear Entertainment due to breach of contract, so they wanted the place cleaned up. As they looked around, they found various costumes of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, as well as the Lace Tiger plushie. They then noticed a slide next to stairs, which Edwin had made for David to get downstairs in a funny and quick way. At the bottom of the slide were a couple mattresses to have something cushy to land on, but inside one of them was was something moving, probably a rat. Dominic had hoped that their task would be obvious when they arrived, but he had no idea what they were supposed to do. Harry suggested maybe they had to finish Edwin's projects and bring them out of here, but Dominic suggested they search the whole building before doing that. Harry was really good with electronics and stuff, while Dominic had an engineering background but wasn't extremely successful in that area. Glenn was essentially the same, only he had a hobby of woodworking, which explains the wooden baseball bat that went through his head. If you know, you know. Anyway, Glenn suggested they split up to search quicker for ideas about what to do, but Harry really didn't want to do that. He refused to walk around this three-story high factory alone. Dominic was fine with that since they'd basically already seen everything on the first floor, so he suggested Harry and Glenn search the third floor together while Dominic alone searched the second. The other two agreed. They headed up the stairs and Harry didn't like the look of the upper two floors. Dominic wasn't extremely thrilled about his task either, but he wouldn't admit that. As he searched the floor, he found what must have been Edwin's belongings. He didn't know much about Edwin, but he did know that he had a wife and son that both died. As he continued to search, Dominic found that the windows on the, both the inside and outside were boarded up with plywood nailed into place. He didn't understand why, since this wasn't like a dangerous area of town or anything. 
In the kitchen, he smelled what he hoped was rotting food, finding a reddish brown stain on the floor near the vent of the fridge. A rat came out from behind the fridge and Dominic said to himself the word, later, moving along and finding what he figured was Edwin's son's room based on the toys, books, and white-shaped tiger bed. It saddened Dominic. On the shelf, though, he found a satchel that was essentially the same as the ones that Dominic, Harry, and Glenn had, meaning this one was issued by Fazbear Enterprises. Dominic questioned why this was here, wondering if maybe another team had been sent here for the job, but wondered why they wouldn't have finished the job and why the satchel was still here. He grabbed it sitting on the bed and looked through it. He found a tape and rewinded it to the beginning and gave it a listen. He heard a guy talking about how he hated that they were sent here the week before Christmas and that he was upset that they were trapped in here. A guy named Terrence had told him that they would get fired if they pried the wood off the windows, but the main guy just hated that they could have been trapped in here forever. He didn't know why the door locked from the outside and why they couldn't get back out. Dominic began to worry about the entrance to the factory, wondering if maybe it had locked behind them. He heard a faint whir and tapping sound from the hallway and shifted to face the door just in case. He continued listening to the tape where the guy talking claimed that since he was an engineer and Terrence was a tech guy, that they guessed they had to finish Edwin's project so that's what they'd be doing. They began doing that and were thankful that they'd found a generator because they didn't know how long their flashlights would have lasted if they had to rely on them. Dominic stepped back out in the hallway and heard the sound of an engine powering up throughout the building as lights came on. He began smelling what he smelled in the kitchen, realizing it was definitely something dead, assuming it was a rat. He opened the last door, which was a sort of closet, and the smell was more prominent here. He assumed it was behind a wall or something and continued on his way. As he continued searching, he played the recording. The guy on the recording essentially talked more about what they had been doing and how they were fixing up some animatronics, and he said that after sharing Terrence's protein bar that they would try to fix up one really cool looking endoskeleton using parts from ones that definitely didn't work anymore. This endoskeleton didn't have any legs, but they wanted to fix it up and get it working. I think we all know where this is going. That endoskeleton was the mimic. But while Dominic wanted to hear more about the other team, the tape ended there. Glenn and Harry came down the stairs, talking about how Harry had thought he'd seen something moving up on the third floor, but Glenn insisted that he was just seeing things. The third floor had apparently been pretty empty of anything actually notable besides the generator, which itself only had a few hours worth of gas left. Glenn said that they should call it quits for the day and come back tomorrow when Dominic said that he'd hoped that they could actually get out. The two questioned what he meant, Glenn beginning to smell what Dominic had smelled before, and Dominic told them about the tape. Harry panicked and Glenn was confused. Dominic was excited to leave, but sure enough, when they tried to, the door wouldn't budge. They looked around for a way out, but there wasn't one. Suddenly, Harry noticed that one of what he remembered to be two court jester costumes was missing from the row of costumes. Dominic had thought there were two, but since the three of them were the only ones here, he assumed he remembered wrong. Glenn said that he thought they had to go check what was causing the smell because he'd only ever smelled something like that once, and he didn't think that it was an animal causing it. Dominic thought he was right, remembering the stain on the fridge. What we see next actually perfectly aligns with things that happened earlier. Edwin always made sure that after dinner, David put things like milk away in the fridge, and he made sure that David didn't leave clothes loose and always put them in the closet. We see each of these things happen earlier in the story, and both times, Mimic was watching him intently. When Dominic, Harry, and Glenn opened the fridge and the closet where Edwin and David kept clothes, they found the dead bodies of the two men from the recording. The one in the fridge was crumpled up almost to the point where he was decapitated, and the one in the closet was hanging amongst the clothes. Glenn and Dominic coincidentally both get their names misspelled on the same page as one another, and both are horrified by what they found, with Harry throwing up after the first discovery from the fridge. But suddenly, Harry screamed extremely loudly. Glenn and Dominic whirled around to see something inside a Jester costume, the missing one Harry had noticed, pulling open Harry's head and pulling his brain out of it. Harry was clearly dead, and Dominic could barely process what was happening. Glenn sprung to action and the two ran away from the thing in the Jester costume, which had turned to look at Dominic. They flew to the secondary set of stairs and slid down the slide, heading over to hide under a pile of lace next to a loom machine, the best place they could find. Dominic somehow managed to fall asleep, but Glenn had woken him up as he was tearing off his lace, explaining that he'd been listening for a while and that the Jester thing was nowhere to be seen. Glenn talked about how they would either beat whatever this thing was, or be trapped in here like the other guys were, and Dominic agreed. However, just then, and as Glenn was walking around the work table, Dominic noticed the Jester costume underneath it and saw shuffling in the costume rack as a Mushroom Man appeared out of it. He yelled for Glenn to run, and he did, but he wasn't quick enough as the Mushroom Man picked up Glenn and smashed his head against the brick wall. 
I feel bad for people named Glenn, always getting their heads smashed. Anyway, Dominic could only run, and that's what he did. He ran. He made it to the third floor, which didn't really have a way out, but it seemed to have the best hiding spots. Dominic didn't have a way out of the building, all he could hope for was people to come and check the building, but he knew that either wouldn't happen or it would take like a month, which he wouldn't last without the food or water that he needed, and that's if he even survived the monster that was around the factory. He then decided that although it might be difficult since it didn't seem to be just a man, whatever this thing was could be destroyed. So he searched for equipment he could use to destroy it, going back to the second floor and grabbing the satchel that he left in the bedroom. However, he noticed that Harry's body had disappeared from the second floor with the mushroom costume in its place. Whatever it was had been here recently. With no regard for being quiet anymore, Dominic rushed back upstairs and caught his breath as he was now confident that he could build something to destroy this thing. However, he wouldn't get the opportunity because the monster, now in a lion costume, rose up from a pile of costumes and began towards Dominic. Dominic tried to rush back down the stairs, but he couldn't as the monster in the lion costume grabbed his ankle, flipped him on his back, and began to rip Dominic apart from the inside out. The monster shoved its hand through Dominic's body and ripped out his entire throat, as his heart essentially exploded in his chest, allowing the sweet satisfaction of death to save him from the agony that he was feeling. And that is the end of The Mimic, a very interesting and awesome story that I think was written so well. About halfway through the story, it basically changes into a completely different story, but the two halves were amazing in their own rights. This was absolutely one of the most important and interesting, if not the most important and interesting story in all of Tales from the Pizza Flex, so you can bet your ass I'll be doing a theory on it. But I'm curious to know your thoughts about the story. Did you like it? Let me know in the comments, and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to. Remember that there's still one more summary to go, that of the epilogue, so stay tuned for that coming very soon, and I'll see you all then. Bye guys!